So tell me about seminary for you. Seminary was a very interesting experience for me. When I graduated from Howard in 1969, I wanted to go to Closer Seminary. That was the only seminary that I applied to. I visited Colgate Rochester, but I wanted to go to Crozer. And I wanted to go to Crozer Seminary for two reasons. Number one, Martin Luther King Jr. went to Crozer Seminary. Number two, Harold Carter Sr., who was a pastor of New Shiloh Baptist in Baltimore, who was my mentor, under whom I worked as an apprentice during my college years, was a graduate of Crozer. And he was also an assistant to Dr. King when Dr. King was at Dexter Avenue. When Dr. King was at Dexter Avenue, Dr. Carter was an undergraduate at Alabama State College. Okay, wow. So those two influences were heavily upon me. And I went to Crozer in the uh, fall of 1969 not knowing that that would be the final year of Crozer's existence mm. in Chester, Pennsylvania. The endowment was running low, the money was running out, and an agreement had been forged between Crozer and Colgate Rochester. Mm. So Crozer moved from Chester, Pennsylvania to Rochester, New York. Now, I was placed in a very odd position at that time because in the spring of 1970, when the merger was announced, I had a decision to make. Would I follow the merger from Chester to, Roch to a Rochester, New York, or would I accept my first church in Westchester, hmm. or would I go back to Howard and do my theological work at the Divinity School. I elected to go to Eastern Seminary in Philadelphia mm -hmm. and accept the pastorate mm -hmm. of the St. Paul Church in Westchester. Wow. J. Pius Barber mm -hmm. and Harold A. Carter mm -hmm. twisted my arm. I didn't want to take the church. Mm -hmm. Primarily because I felt that my seminary years ought to be study years and I didn't want the headache of pastoring and going to school at the same time. Mm -hmm. And J. Pius Barber and Harold A. Carter coerced me to do it. Mm -hmm. Amos Brown was leaving the church at that time and going to Pilgrim Baptist Church in St. Paul, Minnesota. So he's the one who recommended me. And I'll never forget that I had a conversation one evening in the hallway of Old Main, which was the dormitory classroom building on the campus of Crozer. And I was talking with Dr. Harold Carter. And I said, I'm in the dilemma because I really don't want to take this church. And I just want to enjoy my years as a student. And he said these words to me, and the years have not erased them. He said, it would be a tragedy for God to open a door for you and then for you to slam it in his face. <laughs> have a good evening, <laughs> click. And that was our conversation. But that one year at Crozer Theological Seminary, from the fall of 69 through the spring of 70, was not only a wonderful year for me in terms of theological study, getting my feet wet in terms of studying uh, theologically, but that's when I got to know J. Pius Barber. Mm -hmm. And all of those African-American preachers who had come through Crozer, Martin King, Harold Carter, Bill Jones, mm -hmm. Sam Proctor, mm -hmm. all of them had come through the parlor mm -hmm. of J. Pius Barber. And he was one of the most thoughtful, intelligent, theological people I've ever met in my life. Mm -hmm. He was the first African American to get a Master of Theology degree from Crozer Seminary. Mm -hmm. And I was with him 
on the night before he died mm -hmm. in Lankanaw Hospital. But my seminary years were very wonderful years because I had the benefit of going to Crozer for a year, mm -hmm. which was, of course, a very liberal theological institution mm -hmm. compared to Eastern, which was a very conservative yes. theological institution. So I got a good balance between the two. Mm -hmm. And it, for me, was very profitable.